video games as an educational resource. And now the projector is not. <laughs> okay, now it's okay. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we need to consider three important aspects here, okay? The ICTS concept and its role in education. Okay? The cognitive aspect within the learning process and student needs and experiences. So let's go first with ICTS. ICTS school has been a revolutionary way to change the resources that we use in our classroom. However, we see that these resources are always used by teachers rather than students. So every time you go to a classroom and talk with the teacher and ask themselves, okay, uh, do you use ICTS in your classroom? Yes, I do. Okay, you have the laptop and the projector and that's all. And that's the meaning of ICTS. Okay, so we also have this problem between students only and teachers only. There is a big problem between these aspects. Why? If you look at your students, they are always using smartphones, laptops, tablets, playing video games, chatting on Facebook, so they have a big knowledge about technology. They know even more than us. So every time you have a problem, like we recently have, okay, they solve it immediately, like a couple of seconds, okay, it's working, it's amazing. But the teachers are not able to solve those issues, and they don't know so much about technology. Secondly, uh, the resources that are being used in, uh, in the schools have not been really transcendental in the way students can engage with those elements. The most common are the laptop, the projector, and nothing else. And in terms of software, we use Microsoft Word, Microsoft Office, okay, with Microsoft, uh, Microsoft Word, uh, PowerPoint, Excel, and that's all the software we use in our classrooms. And these ones, smart boards. I always complain about with the smart boards because they are not smart. I don't know why they are called smart boards. Okay? Every time you want to use a smart board, you tip and you can't tap it because it's not working. The technology is bad. And the program they use, the software, is not educative. It's like to, you join a projector with a laptop and that's a smart board. So the students don't really have fun using these devices. Okay, I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that cognitive aspects are very important in the way we choose resources and methodologies when we want to teach. So I want you to look at this diagram because the most important point we have in the, here is the learning as a process when it is supposed that the teacher is just a guy and the students are the most important participants. But when we go to the classroom and we see the use of a, a technology in the class, we see that the student is not the, the main and important element in the classroom because the teacher is using the technology, not the students. So if we want to apply this ICDS in our classroom, we need to consider three main element, the teacher. The teacher is going to guide this process, okay? He's going to be behind the students, letting him know what he or she has to do. Okay? First, you have to do this. Secondly, you continue with that, and so on, and so on. Then, technology, the resource. The resource that must be used today, okay? We're in the middle of 21st century, and we're still using whiteboards, textbooks that are old-fashioned. And the objective. There must be always be an objective in here. Why I'm going to use ICDS in my classroom? Because the principal is going to be happy because I apply new methodologies? No, it's not that. It's because it's a new way that can help in the way my students can engage with the knowledge. So now let's go to the project itself. Maybe most of you know this video game, okay? So the project is based in these famous video games, The Sims. Maybe now you're asking yourself, why not the first or second version? The most remarkable feature of this version is it has everything. You can customize everything, it's incredible. You can have hours of fun, okay? But at the same time, you can learn. And I'm going to show you now how that can be possible. This project is based on fifth grade elementary school students. 
Why? Because if you check out the national program, all the units are connected with these video games. You can teach part of the house, family members, okay? You can teach some furniture of the house, okay? And everything in just one single application, in this case, a video game. The ICDS integration, which is the main objective of the project. You can use ICDS, okay? leaving apart the textbooks, the whiteboard, and just focus on this computer where the students are going to be fun and at the same time they are going to be learning. Vocabulary and common expression. I want to stop here a little bit. The national program says we need to teach English with communicative purposes. But when we saw the results of SIMSE test and when we go to, uh, for example, fourth grade high school, we see that our students are not able to communicate. So what is the problem? Why they are not able to communicate? And the reason is related with this aspect, vocabulary, but mainly common expression. They know vocabulary. They know grammatical terms. They can read something. They can understand. But they don't know the common expressions. So when they face this reality and they need to join all these dots, they are not able to do it because they don't know the common expression. So this video game is also helping for them to learn the expressions that are used in different situations. Let's continue with the next part, okay? The process at a glance. The process is based on four main aspects. Okay? The first one, create yourself. You go to, you get into the video game, video game, you create your character as if you were inside the video game. It's incredible. I'm going to show you how this works. The second, build your house. Once you have already created your, your character, you build your house. So you take your character in and you start interacting with other characters and you live your own life. Task assignment and final report. These are the most, uh, the clue, okay, elements of the process. Because in there, the task assignment are going to be the elements that are going to be assessed by the teacher. Meanwhile, the students are going through the gameplay. And the final report that is the summary of all the process that the students were working on. Okay, this is the first part of the video, I mean, create yourself. As I mentioned, this game is amazing because you can customize everything. Since the, the color of the skin, okay, skin color, okay, the shape of your nose, shape of your hair, hairstyle, everything. And the most remarkable thing is that you can customize personal and psychological features. So imagine you are in front of your laptop or the computer, you are creating your character, and you can do it as if this were, as if, Sorry, I think it's what you saying, okay? You are there in the video game, interacting. So it's really fun because the student, they think that they are really inside the video game, okay? This chart is the first step in the evaluation process, okay? Once they start, once they have, they have finished creating the character, they must fill this chart, okay? And if, you, and if you realize, there are several aspects, like the name, the gender, the age, the eyes color, the skin tone, hair color, eyes shape, nose shape, trace, and life which. Okay? And in this column, they have to describe every aspect mentioned in here. And traits and life which are very important elements in the gameplay, gameplay process. Why? Because in these steps, they have to consider the ambitions and some special features that his or her character is going to have. So for example, if I like uh, music, one of my traits, okay, could be something related to music. And my life wish could be, I don't know, the, he or she could be a rock star, okay, a musician. So they put all their interesting and experiences in the video game, okay? Build your house. Once you have already created your character, they need to build a house to live in. Okay, it's normal because they, if they don't build a house, they don't have place to live in. So the first, they have to build a living room, a kitchen, a dining room, both bathroom, and two bedrooms. It's like a common house, okay? But these must be all furniture. So they have to be all the furniture that must be part of each room mentioned in here. And that's important because they must be able to manage the quantity of money they are going to use. So they are given a quantity of money and they have to manage that in order to build all this house with all the furniture required. Let's 
continue with the, okay, there it is. This picture, you can see that it's amazing. You can customize everything, okay? The type of doors we are going to use, okay? How many floors is your house going to, going to have? Okay. Uh, there are some tools in here. You can customize the, the pillars you are going to use, the stairs, okay? It's amazing. They are really gonna have fun playing this. And at the same time, they are learning. The task assignment. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the conversation, this is the clue in order to fulfill the educational objective, okay? The objective of integrating ICTS into the classroom. The first one, look for a job. They need to feed themselves, they need to pay the bills, okay? Electricity, water, so they have to look a job. Look for a job. And that job must be related with the physical, uh, sorry, psychological characteristics. For example, if I like sports, maybe I can be, I don't know, a tennis player. So I can look for a job as a tennis player and I start my career from the lowest level till I go to the highest, okay? It's like if you were studying the university, it's the same. Develop two skills. They need to develop certain skills related to their physical characteristics. For example, if I want to become a writer, I need to read a lot about literature. So maybe he can spend her leisure time, okay, reading books. Make your simple happy, necessity bars. This is important because in this step, is the clue for the gameplay process. If, you are, if your character is not happy, it's because the necessity bar is going bad. And I'm going to, place, I'm going to explain this afterwards because it implies several elements. Make friends, at least three. Another important feature of this video is that you can socialize inside the video game. So maybe you're in your house, you can go out with some friends, you can call your friends, go to the downtown, watch a movie, etc. Any activity you like to do. Develop an artistic talent. Painting, writing, musician, okay? So you can learn to play the guitar and it's funny because for example, when you start playing, uh, studying how to play the guitar, the first step are like if you were starting playing the guitar, it's so, so realistic. So if it is like if you were in real life. Uh, make one wish come true, okay? If they want to become successful and they want to be happy, they must fulfill one wish, okay? And make it true. This is the necessity that I was explaining just a few seconds ago. If you realize there are six important aspects. Hunger, you need to feed your character, okay? The typical means, breakfast, lunch, dinner. And for that you have to pay, okay? So that's important, look for a job. Ladder, you need to go to the bathroom, okay? Energy, energy can be fulfilled by eating and also sleeping, okay? So that it's important because they must balance those aspects. Okay? For example, if they uh, starting feeling their character too much, maybe he's going to be okay in terms of hunger, but he's not going to have energy because he has not sleep. Okay, so he needs to sleep. So uh, the social aspect. Okay, you can socialize, uh, meet friends, go out as I mentioned before. Hygiene, take a shower every day. It's important and having fun, okay? This can be developed by playing video games, okay? Go out with some friends, uh, playing a musical instrument, any activity that can be related to the character interests. The final report. This is the final step in the video game and it's divided in three parts, okay? The first one is the personal chart information. If you remember at the beginning of the presentation, I show you a chart with several aspects. And that chart must be handed in to the teacher, okay? But besides, we have a task achievement that is going to be the rubric that the teacher is going to use in order to assess the student. That is going to be shown afterwards. And the teacher's feedback is the part in which the teacher, okay, talk with the student and give him this chart of uh, task achievements and explain what were the strengths and the weaknesses of his gameplay process. 
here is the task achievements chart. As you can see, every, every aspect I mentioned is included in here. Job or career, skills development, seems happiness, friends and social relationships, artistic talent development, which come true. And you see three criteria, okay? Achieve, medium achieve, and not achieve. Okay. But the most important one is this improvement. This is, the, this is the teacher's job. In here, the teacher is going to write what improvements or suggestion for the student can be applied. For example, Joe Carrie, maybe the student may he seems lost his job three times because he didn't sleep at time. Sorry, he didn't wake up at time, okay? So that's an issue and can be written in here, okay? For example, make your seem be more responsible. That's an improvement. And now uh, we have the skills development, sorry, that is almost the same. So every aspect is connected with the gameplay, gameplay process. And there is no way that a student can get lost because every step I mentioned before is connected with the step of the video game. So the students are not going to go another place to continue with other process. Everything is synchronized as systematics. Now I want to show you a demo okay, of the video game that is going to explain a little bit and you will see how it works. Okay, I just want to finish with one quotation. I want to show you. Um, we have improved methodologies, yet we are still using old-fashioned resources. I want you to keep in mind this. We have several methodologies to teach languages, especially English in our case. But we are still using old resources. Textbooks are out. Students get bored with textbooks. The same with the whiteboard. Why don't we change that? Why don't we use, for example, tablets at classroom? Okay, now they are very affordable, okay? There are tablets at very low prices. So I want you to keep this in mind and think about what you can do as a teacher to change this reality. Thank you very much.